Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode here on the MI Gardener channel. In this episode, we're going to be remineralizing the soil behind us, getting it ready for spring. So the first thing you want to do when you're remineralizing your soil is you want to make sure that you are always inputting more than you took out. Your outputs should never exceed your inputs. And that is one of the biggest things that gardeners struggle with the most is they don't understand just how much energy and minerals they took out of their soil to, to feed their family. And so all of that food that you took off the premise, in a perfect closed system, there would be uh, you know, your, your, your biomass, all the plants that you grew and, and stuff like that, would be turned back into the soil. In a perfect system, that happens. But in an organic garden, even in an organic garden or a regular garden, what happens is that we consume that, that produce, meaning that even if we take the plant life and just take the fruits, you're still taking something away from the garden. Even if you compost the, uh, the plants, you're still taking the fruits and the, the, the tubers and whatever you're, whatever you're harvesting um, off of the premise. And that means you're taking minerals and nutrients away from the garden itself. So putting that back in is so crucial. That's why we do stress composting. We have a big compost pile that everything we harvest, all that plant matter back there is going to the compost pile. We just were uh, cleaning up the garden the other day and pulling out stuff for the, for, the, for the end of the year. And that's all going to the compost pile. That's all getting broken down because those are all uh, inputs that we wanna put the minerals back into the soil because it makes your job easier the following year. Um, so yeah, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing two things here. We're gonna be adding rock dust and azomite because that adds the micronutrients and the trace minerals, which we'll talk about are so, so important to the soil life and the overall uh, health of your soil. And then we're also going to be adding our own compost. You can also use compost that you can that you source from uh, from your local composting facility or even from the store. Compost is great, but not all compost is created equal. And I do want to say that I would prefer you all make your own compost or buy it from a composting facility before you get it from a from a big box store. It's not the worst thing in the world, and I will say it's not the worst thing in the world. Using something like topsoil or, or not using anything at all is, is worse, but using compost from the store, you number one, can't guarantee the source of it. You can't tell you know, where they're coming, you know, what they're putting into it. You can't tell where it's coming from, um, and you, you just can't, t there's a whole lot of unknowns to it. Also, it's too broken down. One of the nice things about homemade compost that I'll show you is it is rich in organic matter. It's rich in humus. Humus is something that not all compost has. Humus is the leftover kind of exoskeleton of broken down plants. And it actually provides a home for beneficial bacteria and fungi, which is at the heart of a healthy garden and healthy soil. If you wanna maintain the health of your soil, you have to understand that a healthy garden starts with healthy soil and the two go hand in hand. So with that being said, you have the humus, which provides not only the beneficial bacteria and fungi, it not only provides the organic matter, which is going to provide minerals in your soil, but it's also going to give a home for the, for the beneficial bacteria to thrive so that they can begin breaking down the rock dust and azomite. You cannot have one without the other. They go together. They are so interconnected because the rock dust is not plant available. There's a whole lot of minerals in here that are great for your plants and great for your garden and, and also great for you. But what happens is that oftentimes people throw it into a garden and they wonder why their plants are still having micronutrient deficiencies or, you, or you, they wonder why their plants are not at their 100% capacity. The thing is you can do everything right, but if you don't have a home for the bacteria and fungi and you don't have the bacteria and fungi, there's nothing for, there's nothing to break down the the minerals here, what the bacteria do is they will go out and they will search. We call them miners. They are miners that will mine the beneficial uh, trace minerals and, and elements in, found in rock dust and other uh, you know, trace mineral supplements. They will go out, they will break those down and they will bring them back to the plant in the spring or whenever there's a plant growing and they will trade that plant for the trace minerals and nutrients in exchange for sugars that the plant creates through photosynthesis. This symbiotic relationship is so essential in an organic garden. And it's one of the reasons why, a, why an inorganic garden, one that promotes using a lot of synthetic chemicals and, 
and things like that harms the soil life and that is why it relies so heavily on external uh, kind of external feeding regimens um, a lot of external sources of nutrients because it's not self-sustaining um, this is this is not as close to a closed system as I'd like but again when you take the stuff off of the premise there's really nothing you can do to put that back rather than I mean we're doing all we can do when we when we compost um, so we don't have to add as much rock dust but it's it's far more self-sustaining than something like an inorganic uh, farming system uh, where they they spray chemicals they use they use high salt fertilizers and things like that that kill the soil life and kill the soil bacteria and, and biology. Um, so yeah, so these two go hand in hand. When you wanna remineralize your soil, it is paramount, folks. It is absolutely paramount that you add both of them because uh, your, your soil will be depleted over time. Uh, you cannot just say, well, I, I'm, I'll get to it later. You have to make it a practice of doing it every single year so that the balance in your soil is maintained. If you have a wild swing where the bacteria say, hold on, there's nothing, and then you lose a lot of life, you'll, your, your soil life will die, okay? And then you add a bunch of stuff, well, you've already lost a lot of your soil life, so then it takes a lot of time for the soil bacteria to, 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 uh, to come back up to numbers, to thrive again. And then it's, it's this constant swinging back and forth, this pendulum is just so not great for a successful garden. Whereas if you constantly just make a regimen of spring, some, or, uh, spring and fall, spring and fall, you remineralize in the spring, you remineralize in the fall, you keep the, the garden and soil healthy, you will have a healthy garden uh, every single year guaranteed. So let's throw this stuff on the garden. And then uh, the final step will be in the fall when we get some autumn leaves, we're gonna throw autumn leaves on the top. You always, always, always folks have to cover the soil, whether it be with a cover crop, whether it be with perennials, or whether it be with leaves or a tarp or anything, anything, straw. You need something that's going to add a protective barrier. It's gonna insulate the bacteria, prevent them from uh, you know, being exposed to extreme temperatures. It's going to help with compaction. It's gonna help with all that stuff. So that's the final step that we'll do later, uh, but we don't have any leaves right now, so that's coming in the fall. So whenever I'm applying rock dust, it's great, it's great to, uh, it's great to load it on, but I do find that sometimes people be, they're a little excessive with it. A little bit goes a very long way, especially if you've been maintaining the health of your, your garden. I always recommend if you're doing this for the first time, put it on heavier and then use it lighter uh, uh, later. Because once the minerals are in your soil, they're not, the, the micronutrients and the trace minerals, they're not depleted nearly as much as your nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, uh, magnesium, things like that. Um, and so you have to replace those minerals a lot more than, than you do your, your trace minerals. So over top of this 48 square foot bed here, I've added, I've added about, I'd say maybe three, four pounds ish onto that bed. And I always work downwind. It's never good to breathe this stuff. If you, uh, if you happen to, to have a dust mask on hand, always, always, always recommend a dust mask. Um, that's just a uh, very good practice. You don't, so you're not breathing in that fine particulate. And also the finer the particulate, the better. We always get micronized rock dust because micronized rock dust will be uh, made plant available far, far quicker because the surface area is far greater. Obviously the smaller or the lower the surface area, the longer it takes for the micronutrient or for the the uh, the microbes and the bacteria to break down the 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 material, allowing for the micronutrients to be made plant available. So never uh, it's it's never a good idea to add a big chunks of river rock and things like that. And then all we're going to do is just put a a decent portion or a decent amount um, of homemade compost on top of the bed. You don't need a whole lot getting it ready for spring because we're going to follow back up in the spring with more. But it's important to give the it's important to give the soil bacteria something to something to thrive on, something to enjoy over winter. 
So you have to remember that your soil does not just go on vacation. Just because you go to Florida sometimes in the winter does not mean <laughs> that your soil bacteria goes with you. Uh, the soil bacteria, they have to stay in the soil where they're at. And so, so by giving them a place to call home and by taking care of them, you're going to ensure that your soil is healthy in the spring. So that is really all there is to it. If you do these two things, your, your, uh, your garden's gonna be ready to rock in the spring. So that is it. That is how you remineralize and get your garden ready for spring. Just make sure, always, always, always cover your soil with something, whether it's a cover crop, throw some cover crop seeds on there, throw some leaves on there, uh, or, you know, heck, plant perennials, it doesn't matter. Uh, just make sure, that the, make sure that there is something covering the soil so that, uh, so that your garden stays uh, nice and loose and aerated and, and ready to go in the spring. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned something new. Please do share this video if you found it a wealth of information that helps our channel grow. Throw a like up there, that also helps our channel grow. Um, and even let us know in the comments box what you enjoyed in this video. And that really does help us grow because it allows us to, uh, to create content for future episodes and, and kind of learn where we need to, uh, where we need to um, improve. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And as always, we'll talk to you all later. See ya. Bye.